Today we will be discussing about development of occlusion. Now what is occlusion? Occlusion in general context is the contact between the antagonistic teeth. Whereas in technical terms occlusion it is the interdigitation of the maxillary and the mandibular teeth when they approximate each other either in rest or in motion. As you all know that human dentition is a diphyodont dentition that it, it comprises of both permanent and primary sets of dentition which are further divided into various developmental stages. These developmental stages are of four types that is the pre-dentate or jaw relationship, the primary or the deciduous dentition stage, the mixed dentition stage and the permanent dentition space. Now coming over to the pre-dentition phase. The pre-dentition phase consists of the alveolar ridges or the jaws which are known as the gum pads. Now the gum pads are maxillary and mandibular. The maxillary gum pad is the U in horseshoe in shape and the mandibular gum pad is U shaped. They are firm, resilient and pink in color. The major characteristic feature of these gum pad is that the, so they are divided into two sections by the means of a dental groove. The dental groove divides it into the larger that is labia portion and the lingual portion. Then these gum pads are further divided into various sections by the means of transverse grooves. These transverse grooves lodge the tooth germs which will further erupt as primary tooth. Now what is the lateral sulcus? The lateral sulcus is the transverse groove which separates the canine and the first deciduous molar. Now what is the significance of the lateral sulcus? The lateral sulcus it defines the occlusion and it is generally distal in the mandibular arch than in the maxillary arch. Now what is the significance of this stage? The, in this stage, the significant feature that is the infantile open bite is present. This is because of the absence of maxillary or mandibular teeth. That is why the open bite is present which helps in the suckling of the infant. The suckling is a reflex which is present since birth. It is with the help of the buccal musculature, the label and the movement of the tongue. The infant can suck. Now uh, another stage which uh, commences the primary or the pre-dentate stages commences into the deciduous dentition period. The deciduous dentition period it starts from the eruption of the first teeth in the oral cavity till six years of age. Now the sequence of eruption of teeth in this stage is A, B, D, C, E. Now there are certain clinical significant features in this stage that is the eruption of the primary teeth take place, this absent of the curve of spi is absent, the curve of spi is the curve which is formed by the incisor edges of the anteriors towards the cuspal tips of the posterior leading to the condyle of the mandible. Now there is slight overjet or overbite present at this stage and there is hardly any cuspal interdigitation which is present. Now another characteristic feature or the hallmark feature of this stage is the presence of spacing. Now, there are two types of spaces that is the physiological space and the primate space. The physiological space is a generalized spacing which is present between the primary teeth and the primate space or the anthropoidal space it is the space which exists in the maxillary arch between the canine uh, and the uh, lateral incisor and in the mandibular arch between the canine and the molars. These help for the eruption of the permanent teeth in further stages of dentition. Now there is another dentition which may be present which is non-space dentition but it often leads to molar occlusion. So what is the use of these spaces? They also help in placing the canine of the maxillary as well as the mandibular arch towards each other. As we can see in this picture, the mesial surface of the maxillary canine, it intercuspates with the distal surface of the mandibular canine. And the spaces which are present between the central incisor and the canine in the maxillary arch, this is known as the anthropoidal space. But what happens in non-space dentition due to the excess of tooth material or shorter arches, it may lead to the absence of the primate spaces. So coming over to the occlusion relationship in primary dentition. In molars, the occlusion relationship can be divided into 
the flush terminal plane, the mesial step terminal plane and the distal step terminal plane. The flush ter uh, step terminal plane, it means that the vertical plane which is passing through the distal surface of the maxillary and the mandibular molars are in the same plane. This leads to normal class 1 occlusal relationship. In the case of mesial step terminal plane, the distal surface of the mandibular molar is more mesial to that of the distal surface of the maxillary primary molar. And in the distal step terminal plane, the distal surface of the mandibular primary molar is distal to that of the maxillary primary molar. So the normal anterior overjet in this phase is 2 mm and over 4 up to 2 to 4 mm and overbite is 2 mm. Coming over to the mixed dentition phase, which is after that of the uh, primary dentition phase. The mixed denti dentition phase is divided into the first transitional, the intertransitional, and the second transitional period. The first transitional period is signified by the eruption of the permanent molars and the permanent central and lateral incisors. There's, that is, there is an exchange of the permanent incisors by the primary incisors. So, in intertransitional phase, this phase, it is signified by the presence of the first primary molar, the second primary molar, the first permanent molar, and the central and the lateral permanent incisors. Then comes the second transitional period in which there is the emergence of the bicuspids and the cuspid and the second permanent molar. And finally, there is the establishment of occlusion. This is the flow chart that signifies and that depicts various uh, molars incisors in various phases of the tooth development. So what is the significance of this first transitional period? In first transitional period, early medial shift or early medial drift takes place. Then uh, this is uh, defined by that the eruptive forces of the molars, they utilize the primate spaces for the establishment of the occlusion and in the late mesial shift the space which is uh, utilized it is leeway space the leeway space it is the space which is the difference of the space which between the permanent cuspids and the premolars and the permanent primary molars and the cuspids this is 3.4 millimeter in the maxillary and 1.8 in the mandibular arch but late mesial shift that takes place in the case of non-space dentition when the primate spaces are not present. Now further incisor transition takes place that is the permanent incisors get replaced. The incisor what is incisor, incisor liability? Incisor liability it is the exchange of the permanent incisors uh, that, that is the primary incisors get replaced by the permanent incisors. It is the angulation of the permanent incisors with that of the permanent mandibular incisors is 120 degree while that of the primary incisors is 134 degree. This increased space is utilized for the eruption of the permanent incisors. And the further spaces which are utilized for permanent incisor eruption is the primate space at the increased intercanine width and the, that leads to the increase in the circumference of the maxillary arch. This is 7.6 mm in the upper arch whereas 6 mm in the lower arch. Uh, another important phenomenon which occurs or the self-correcting anomaly which occurs in this stage is the ugly duckling stage. This was first given by Broadbent in the year 1937 in which this is uh, generally in this stage we can see that there is a flaring between the maxillary incisors or the V shape is present between the maxillary central incisors. Now why, why this happens? This is because the eruptive forces of the canine, they exert forces on the roots of the lateral incisor which exert force further on the roots of the permanent central incisors. Thus the permanent central incisors get deflected distally. But as the canine erupts in the oral cavity completely, they exert forces on the crown of the central incisor which will further close the space between them. Now, intertransitional period, it lasts for a period of one and a half year in which the primary teeth are sandwiched between the permanent teeth. For small or minor rotations by interproximal reduction takes place and this minor attrition of the 
tips of the cusp. No fixed intercuspal digitation takes place at this stage. Now the second transitional period, it is from 9 to 10 years of age. All the posterior teeth are shed and the cuspids, the premolars and the permanent first molar, all of these teeth erupt at this stage and finally the occlusion is established. The permanent dentation is signified for by the eruption of the second permanent molar that is the, at the age of 12 years. Finally, the diameter, the length as well as the circumference of the arch gets reduced and all the permanent teeth are present in the oral cavity by the age of 12 to 14 years. Now, major characteristic feature of this uh, stage are that there is a decrease in the overbite and the overjet, decrease in the arch length and the circumference of the arch and the final occlusion is established. Even the overjet and the overbite are finally decreased. Now, there are certain self-correcting anomalies at various stages of occlusal development. These are the abnormalities in the dentition which get corrected on their own during the course of the dental development. The various stages are signified by different anomalies. That is the pre-dentate period or the period when the jaw gum pads are present. Uh, it is signified by the presence of retrognathic mandible that is corrected by the differential growth of the mandible in the anterior direction. Then infantile open bite which will be corrected by the eruption of the permanent teeth or the primary teeth. Then infantile swallowing pattern will also be corrected when the over open bite is reduced and the introduction of the solid food in night. In the primary dentition, anterior open bite, anterior deep bite is present which will be reduced further by the eruption of the permanent teeth in the oral cavity. The normal physiological spaces will be reduced by the eruption of the permanent molar. The flush terminal plane that is the plane uh, that is the plane of the mandibular molars will be either corrected into mesial step or term, uh, distal step of terminal plane by the eruption of the permanent molar. In mixed dentition space, phase anterior deep bite exists by the full eruption of the mandibular molars this will be corrected then further mandibular anterior crowding by the means of tongue pressure and the increase in the intercanine arch width an ugly duckling stage or the broadband phenomenon will be corrected by the eruption of permanent canine and end on molar relationship or the flush terminal plane will be corrected by the eruption of the permanent molars and ideal occlusion in permanent dentition there is increased overbite or overjet that will be decreased by the eruption of all the permanent molars and the differential growth of the mandible. Thus finally we can conclude that occlusion or the development of occlusion is not only a genetically controlled process but it is also an environmentally controlled process which can be concluded through various steps of development. Thank you.